What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Friday episode, Capes and Cows. I might ha not have Winston and Coy. Who needs them today? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got, I got the legend with me. That's right. John the Outlaw Roca is going to be joining me today. We're going to be talking. I mean, th we, this week that James Gunn thing happened with um, the comments on Tim Burton. Again, another post that he made years ago that they bring up and... They're, they're talking about that. There's other things I'm curious about the, John's opinion on, whether it's the is it box office that's happening now with superhero movies and uh, other things that are happening. When are we going to see some of these? Is the Marvels going to get pushed back? Mm. We'll talk about that, all that and more. But the, really, as you saw from the, the thumbnail and the title, the question is, what's the state of comic book movies right now? I mean, there is always that age-old question of, is there comic book movie fatigue, right? But I think now is the most prominent time where you can probably look and say maybe because when you look at all of the when you look at all of the titles that have been marvel's not in the shape they were years ago dc eu certainly went out with a fart and um and they still have one movie left when what's happening with aquaman so we'll talk about all this and more it'll be a long conversation with me and john um so if you're brand new to the channel we just hit ninety thousand subscribers not too long ago so we're we're on the way to 100 we just need you guys to help us out so hit that button subscribe show a little will you and go to uh you can go to t public the links in the description there we've got a whole bunch of things going on and uh and that's it man so it's myself it's john roca it's capes and cows big thing let's do it cool Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Capes and Cows, big thing. It's myself, Christian Harloff, here on YouTube's, or the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. And I'm here, joined by the one, the only, host of the Hot Mic. He runs the John Roca channel, Outlaw Nation himself, John Roca. Hello, everybody. How's good, it going? Good to have you, man. I'm glad Thank you were you. able to make it, because it was. it's yeah. funny how we just kind of find these the, these things out we usually, because you and I text each other often. Yeah, yeah. And we were, I think we were talking about Ahsoka or whatnot, and, yeah. and then it, um, it, you, you were coming up here to, you were on the picket lines, yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, well, hey, man, you should come in if you're able to, to jump by the show, and lucky enough, you were able to make it, so yeah. welcome. Thank you, man. We've been trying yeah. to do this, um, you know, before the Dan one, we've been trying, we were trying to do it for a while, so now, now I'd be able to, so I don't need Dan Merle here. No, so, yeah. <laughs> the horse, no, the horseman, no more. Um, no, but it's good to have you. And, we, yeah, thanks, and there's, man. and we, as you said, like, what are we? What are the topics? And I said, you know, look, there's right now, especially with the strike, there's so many different things that, like, you, yeah. you're like me. You're. What's funny is you have you, me, Dan, um, I think Greg Alba, a few mm. other people, Mike Kalinowski, a few people feel the same way. Me, you, and Mike are all in the union. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't feel. I mean. I am 100% in support of everything that both yeah. the WJ and SAG are doing. I don't think SAG has been as clear to um, influencers yeah, and yeah, stuff critters, and yeah. critics. There is kind of mixed messaging mm -hmm. here and there, and there's not, not, there's not a lot of information. And look, they got bigger fish to fry, and I, I understand yeah, yeah. that. Um, but there are a lot of people in our space mm -hmm. that aren't talking about anything. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. decided, like me, yeah. that you're going to talk about it. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm an actor, and I'm right. a SAG actor. And for me, I look at it like I'm promoting... The acting and the writing, and that's what I focus on, the acting, the writing, the directing, when I'm reviewing, when I'm talking about stuff, when I'm getting into anything, and so that's my approach. And I, in no way, think anyone else who's deciding not to do it doesn't have a right to Agreed. do it. You know, walk your own path. It's like masks. You want to wear the mask, great. You don't want to wear the mask, fine. Everyone should walk their own path and do their own thing, and whatever they're comfortable with. Yeah. I want to uplift. I've always been about uplifting the, the performances and actors and writers and directors. Uh, and obviously being honest in my critique, but I like to do that. So for me, that's what I focus on on my channel now is I'm covering this stuff, but I'm focusing a lot on the creatives, more, even more than I usually do. Sure, and I think that one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, because what they did when they wrote back to me was that if you're a professional critic um, and it's, it doesn't fall, you're not, you're not crossing any lines if yeah, you're doing it that no, way. No. And I think that especially we're both in, um, I, I'm in BFCA, you're in the L.A., yeah, critics. yeah, yeah, the HCA, yeah, yeah. HCA, and so, right, and then both certify Rotten Tomatoes and yeah. all that, and then, so, the argument that I've had, not argument, I shouldn't say, mm. but I agree with you, I think that there are people that if they, you feel, I don't want to even yeah. attempt it, then by yeah. all means, I respect it, but I think right. that one of the things that I had said to people was, what they don't understand is, because I've had a few people go, well, I'm not a professional critic, so I can't talk about it, I was right. like, if you're on my show, and I'm paying you to be on the show, right. and you're critiquing television or movies, 
you're a paid critic. Yeah. It's just, just you might not be paid by variety. You might not be right. paid for, right. but but you're you're a paid critic. Right. And it's and if there's one thing if someone is sending you like if Universal's like John, we want you to cover Fast X for us. Yeah. And here's a here's a thousand dollars for the channel. Then you then you're doing something wrong. Right. Because that's but that's not what we're doing. No, no. I've yeah. I've re- and I've never received money from the studios, and I'd be real hesitant to take any money from the studios. You know me. I'm an yeah. asshole. I like to spell. Oh, we can cuss. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to walk my own path and speak my own truth, whether l- people like it or not. And mm-hmm. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes I step on my own toes and whatever. But taking money from a studio for me, for me, I would ha- I would have to become something else, uh, or would have to be very clear to them that I will not be kissing the studio's ass sure. or not. T- you know that I'm right. going to be telling my truth. Yeah. You know? well, but either way, you can't escape. The um, well, I, I had a campaign. difficulty. I had a campaign yeah. for uh, for Jurassic World 30th, mm. year, year, and it, it was we signed it two weeks before the strike happened. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And again, to to be to give SAG more than a lot of credit, mm. they they said anything that you have that was signed before, yeah, before. the deal, yeah. you should honor. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, for me it was Jurassic Park, fan of the movie, fan of the thing. So I did yeah. go through it, but you can't do it afterwards. You can't. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 exactly. part, that's part of the. That's part of it. So that's what also influencers and difference between influencers and critics are. But yeah. nonetheless, you've been doing a lot of stuff. You, I mean, I, I tell you all the time. The, I still think, and this is this is a compliment. Don't please mm-hmm. don't take it as an insult. Yeah. I think the hot mic's the best thing you've ever done. Thanks, I think it's, I think it's your best show. It's mm-hmm. a, and it's so it's. I think that there's a reason why you get almost like a thousand, fifteen hundred people watching weekly live. Um, your people are compl- are always looking at the uh, stories that you guys yeah, are breaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I break your balls just a little bit? Sure, feel free. <laughs> if you don't want it, in here, I'll cut it out. But like, you know how much I love you. You, have, you and I have been friends for twenty some odd years. Sure. There was a story that came out about um, it was a Fantastic Four when one of those shit went down. And, yeah. Um, and I and I had posted um, look on, on the on the hot mic. Jeff Snyder posted uh, uh, Vanessa Kirby on, yeah. on the hot mic. Make sure you check it out. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Broke it sends me a DM. He goes, "You go out of your way not to mention me." I go, "It's your show. (laughs) You got to say my name, but it's your show." I'm pointing him back to Hot Mike. You're going 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 to you. You're linked back to it. Linked back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But this is the thing I I I have to confront when I do this show with Jeff because people don't know the history of it. Like I came up with the show, and I pitched the show back at Collider, Mm, like for me and Jeff at Collider, and. They wanted to change it. They wanted to put, and no offense to Perry, they wanted to put Perry on it because they were really focusing on her, Perry and Jeff. And yeah. I was just, I was so, when Jeff was in a place where he was worrying about what he was going to do for a job, because there was a period of time where like he was being let go from a number of things, he reached out to me and he's like, hey man, anything. And so I pitched them. So we talked about it for six months. Oh, really? Well, yeah, before wow. we put it together. And in that six months, he got hired by all these people. Oh, okay, is that, what, got is that what kept line. pushing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kept, yeah, so when he got hired, so I was like, okay, okay. And then finally he texted me, he goes, okay, man, I want to do the show. I'm like, great, let's put it together. So, yeah. you know, I, I pick out the topics. Jeff, you know, gives his two cents and proves whatever, but he brings the scoops. He brings the right. r- rumors and stuff He's like Bradley that. He's Bradley Cooper which is great. in the, uh, what, what was the, what was the, the, the sniper movie? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, He's yeah. the American sniper. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. I built the military. He yeah. just joined. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but we do it together in terms of doing the show and we have great chemistry and I knew it would work. Because we're great East Coast guys who yeah. ball bust. You know this. Yeah. You're a East Coast guy who ball bust. And so, and, and Jeff is great because Jeff is willing to be wrong. And he's willing to go toe to toe with me. And I'm willing to do the same thing. And I think that makes the show unique in 100%. our airwaves. Absolutely yeah. does. And I think that's what it is because you have a very, you have a very, you've always had, uh, you strong headed, mm-hmm. which is, which is great, which is why yeah, you've been yeah. so successful. And it's, and, but, when you don't have anyone to challenge you, it just becomes one thing. Yes, it and, becomes a little boring. And it's well, it's not, I don't necessarily for me. No, for me, I'm saying for, for you, me. I yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but I think that it's 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 one sided, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, if you get someone in there who doesn't have your point of view, they don't feel represented, right? So like, right. when you have someone like Jeff, who is not necessarily, uh, and I don't, I'm not just talking about politically. Yeah, I'm just yeah, talking yeah. about like. He will just go, and he. What I love about him is even if he's, and, and I'm, tons of times I don't agree with Jeff. Mm-hmm. But he stands true to what his opinion is. Even yes. if he's wrong, he'll yes. sit there and have that conversation. Like I thought, your conversation on the whole thing with Sound of Freedom, Sound of Freedom was fantastic because it just represented two different sides of of. And he wasn't coming from the you know the radical yeah, side. Right, he was exactly. just coming from the side of look. I'm looking at this as a movie. Yeah, yeah. And you're coming from someone who's been really well adversed and 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 real red on on the subject. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's yeah, it's a, it's a really good show. If you haven't checked it out, go to um. 
John Roca's channel. <laughs> <laughs> and on the channel, uh, shows that John put together. It's a hot <laughs> mic, and you should go and check it out because it's uh, it's a really it's a great show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's, I did see somebody that was funny the other day because I mentioned Jeff, and they're like, they go. No, I don't listen to Snyder. Snyder doesn't. Snyder doesn't like Marvel at all. Yet he posts it all the time because he's just looking for hits. And I was like, he's a reporter. Yeah, that's what he. That's what yeah. he's going to go for. It doesn't matter if he likes it. I mean, there's tons of people at, at CNN and Fox and whatever too. They don't like a lot of the stuff that they have to report on, but they know it's going to get the the views and they get a report on it. Can I talk to you about something? Sure, go ahead. I'm, I'm sick of what's this puritanical approach to, this whole thing that's been happening lately. Like. People have the uh, world or the, in movie space. No, no, just the movie space. Yeah. The tribalism that is going on in the movie space now is oh, yeah. getting a little ridiculous, now. right? Well, fair. I, I guess I'm more in tune with it now sure. than I have been before, and sure. certainly living in San Diego keeps me out of the old LA bubble there. But like the idea that these critics are sitting here, and some of the people in our space are like, "I'm a proud. I would never with an influencer." This kind of nonsense. You mean for as far as the strike and that? Yeah, kind of and every, yeah. just everything. Yeah, yeah. It just needs to stop, and people need to stop reaching for pitchforks. And, and torches, and trust me, I know it's ironic that I'm the one saying that, but like it needs to stop. We have to create space a little bit more for people to kind of figure things out as they go along. And if they want to have a mixture of criticism and influence, or they can do that. Like you just mentioned the thing with Jeff. Last week, Jeff and I went toe to toe about this kind of stuff because he was saying that he got all this negative reaction for his Bottoms tweet mm. for the film Bottoms. And I said to him, Jeff, you need, you're looking at it all wrong. Because he was like, they're all judging me as a middle-aged guy. Shouldn't I be? And I'm not even middle-aged, but shouldn't I be able to enjoy the movie? And I said, no, no. If they're reacting strongly, that's a positive. You know, if they're quote-tweeting you and right. they have thousands, that means your opinion matters. They think your opinion matters. And so you should hold on to that and let them cry about influence or critic or what is he or what is he not. Screw that. Just fucking walk your own path. And yeah. then and I realized that. And I think after that Andor tweet, that really changed my mind about so many things about how I approach this. And seeing how many people enjoy being controversial and getting, you know, their points across. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons I like about Jeff, as you said. He stands his ground. He does. Really he'll, he'll tweet out and, does, and and I think sometimes he's there are people, you're right, like they're like Put the dukes up mm -hmm. before they even send hit the send button, right? Yeah, like right. They, they yeah, know, yeah, yeah. like I, I just it's that's not my thing. Right. I've never been that way. I just, God bless you. You're you're you you st you you're still looking for shit on Twitter. I'm old, yeah, but, <laughs> but I still <laughs> can do it. Shaking your fist, I can the, still get the in the ring. <laughs> but it's a, but a lot of those. I'm things. no Kalinowski though. Oh my god, he, he, he's he, he's hilarious on Twitter. I but like, I no, love but, but what I will say again, giving you credit, like I saw yeah. you kind of change your stance a little bit on some things too, because you yeah. were you were going to bat for um for Rachel Ziegler for a little bit. Yeah, I was. And, yeah. and then you looked at that situation and said, well, maybe she's not approaching this the yeah. right way. Yeah, certainly the Snow White. And, like, watching those interviews, and I love Rachel because, I mean, one, I think she's incredibly talented. Yeah. B, beautiful, and C, a Latina actress. And sure. there's not a lot of Latina actresses that are getting a chance. And to, starting to rise in prominence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to lead franchises, you know? I mean, you could look at West Side Stories and music, but like, look at all these other things that they're looking at her for, right. you know, the Shazam 2, and then what we've got uh, what we've got coming up with Snow White. I mean, that's 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 that doesn't happen all, a lot for Latina actresses. Right. But, I mean, the responses on the red carpet. And look, Gal Gadot should not get away with uh, without some of the blame here, too. They both were just like responding in such negative ways about it. And I get it. I'm a cisgender straight male. I totally get it. But there's a way to say it. There's a way to do these things where it doesn't come across like you're being a shitty, snarky person and shitting on people's memories of an animated classic that they love. Yeah. You know, there's no reason. You can't do your feminist take and, and not try to make fun of people who like the original thing that is still being passed on, by the way, generation to generation. It is. And I think the, the problem was it's a... I, I also think to not, maybe not defend her, no, no, but no. to say, you know, maybe I can understand that she wasn't thinking about it. Like, and where she's going to have these conversations with friends. Yeah, right. She's going to exactly. be talking about it. Like, she, you know what? I'm doing this movie. And it's going to be a different take on this and this. And look, she's she's been in like three movies yeah. or something or two of uh, right. And they, neither one of them has done well. Yeah. But she is rising, and people are hiring her, and it's a big, it's a really big. Yeah, she's got a Hunger Games movie coming. She's got yeah. Hunger Games yeah. coming also, so she's probably, you know, she as she's having these conversations like I get to do this and I get to do that, and she and she gets the mic. She doesn't have the training. Yeah, that's the other thing. Is yeah, we have gone through a very different period now because of social media, where the talent is not trained in media the way that they used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because this. 
Yes. You can do this right, and right. you can sync a movie like that. Mm -hmm. Now she did it um, more so. I mean, cuz this movie's it's gonna it's it's gonna have its struggles now. Oh because, yeah, because big this, time. this is this is this is a case where I don't think the age old uh, any publicity is good publicity. Right. I think this is bad publicity, and I think that yeah. she's she's trying to kind of get herself out of the the hole. But um, but the other thing that I will say, people forget about things pretty fast. Yeah, and there'll be something else that people are you know getting upset about. You taught me that years ago. Yeah, my first controversy on Twitter, you said that. You were like, don't respond, let it blow over. In three days, they'll forget about you, move on to the next thing. And that has always proven right. I've it, seen it happen so many times. Yeah, it's also... Remember it's, the AI issue with Secret Invasion? Who the fuck is talking about that now? Right. It's it was a, the show that they're big, pitching it, Right, it's a big thing. People Because people yeah. want things to scream about. And yeah. the only... Unf there are some times, though that I wish that it would stick. And there's other things, I don't want to get into a whole political right, conversation, right, but there's some things sometimes that in the political world that people are like, oh, we gotta change this, we gotta change this. And then this, look, it happened again. And then we're mad for three days and then they forget about it and then it happens again. Oh, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad. And it's like, that's the type of stuff because it's yeah. it's part of the same cycle. Yeah. It's like, because there's, it's like the cat on the string. It's <laughs> like there's a new, there's a new thing yeah. um, to get either upset about or get happy about or a new viral video to watch. It's, yeah. It's how we are today as a society. We've been and conditioned think, to be yeah, this way. Right. So that's why I think like the the one thing though, people won't forget once the movie comes out though. Right. It'll, it'll circle back up again. But I guess it's relevant to the conversation of the James Gunn stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this is by the time this comes out, um, it might be a couple of days old, but whatever. Um, I had seen it and John walked in and I was like, you see this thing that happened with James Gunn and it's they're like old Facebook posts. Yeah, twelve years ago. Yeah, where he's talking about because he's he's a, he's a comic book fanatic. Mm -hmm. It's one of the main reasons he got the gig, um, and he does not like the Tim Burton movies. Yeah, and he said it as much. And he does I, the one that got me was the he, he, the the Batman Begins. He yeah, he doesn't even think that's a good movie. No, he doesn't think that. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, I don't think Tim Burton's going to be working with them anytime soon, though, <laughs> because I do think though, even though because this is still. This is how many years? Is it twelve years ago? Yeah. So well, the tweets are twelve. What was years it? So comments, what, yeah. yeah. Well, so what was that? It was two thousand and uh, and nine. Eleven. Eleven. Is that no. what it was? Oh, okay, two thousand eleven. So two thousand eleven. So that was three years before Guardians, or mm -hmm. two years before he really shot Guardians. Yeah. Um, so you know he wasn't he wasn't the James Gunn of today, but still, yeah, he still was getting gigs and yeah. he was still doing stuff. Maybe you don't do that in a public forum, but it, social media also was yeah. different back then. Yeah. He's an interesting cat because yeah. clearly, like you said about me, I'm like he has he's got strong opinions yeah. about what he likes and what he doesn't like. And those strong opinions have led him to create quite a number of really good movies that people like and enjoy. And so if you're gonna go back and pick apart something he said 11, 12 years ago, right. I think you're just looking for something to be upset about. And I, I I've never seen anything like this where someone is already trying to be undercut from the beginning before they actually issue a movie that gives you a general idea of what they're trying to do with their universe. Yeah. It's mind-blowing to see people jumping on top of him about this. And this is just more fuel to the fire. But I don't think he's 100% wrong. And it's my opinion. Oh, of the Tim Burton stuff? Yeah, yeah it, I think it's, it's, a dated, it's a dated it's movie. It's a dated film. It is. The only good scenes it's are the scenes with him and, and Nicholson. Those are the only good scenes in the movie, in my opinion. And even Batman Begins is okay. Oh, I'm going to disagree with you. Oh, feel free. Yeah. Uh, to me, Dark Knight is the jewel, is the crown, of the uh, jewel in the crown. Agreed. But ba Batman Begins is it's a, fine. It's a good movie. It's just not something I go back to and watch all the time. Ellis just woke up in a dead sleep. <laughs> That's yeah, all right. For sure. Um, yeah. I, uh, he also likes Return of the Jedi, so please. Well, he and I, well, he and I got into conversations about this all the time. because, mm. I, And it's funny. I actually f have found... Like I loved, I loved Batman '89 when it came out because oh sure, but, of course. But it was because of the event, right? right. We, we remember because it was like lines. Where were you at the time? Were you in Washington? I was in uh, yeah, I was in Virginia. Okay, Virginia. so so lines around the block. Oh yeah, it was like it was like the kind of event that doesn't really happen in the same way like Star Wars happened. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it was ET Barbie. Like, Compare Barbie right. to 1989. That's essentially but, what you got. But even Barbie, you don't really get that now because you can reserve your seats. Oh, right. You know no, what I mean? you like, had to stand I'm in line. I'm talking about rides right. around points. the block for, for a while. And like yep. that was it was a very different. I remember the Batman shirts were everywhere. Yes. Like it was it was a yeah. thing. And Nicholson was the reason why people were talking about it because it was he was the thing that sold the movie. Yeah. He was Jack Nicholson and Keaton was a Mr. Mom at yeah. the time, right? So um 
you know, the movie itself, I remember, again, I, ne- I don't like the second one. People love the second one, Bat- <laughs> Batman, uh, begin- uh, Batman Returns. Ba- Batman Returns? I can- yeah, I think it's so... <laughs> oh, my God. I don't like Batman Returns. That's way better than the first Batman. I think it's too Tim Burton-y. Oh, my I think God. it's way too Tim burton wow. I think it's got the... Uh, it's, it's, okay. it, it, it lost its style. It, it, it's, it's more... It didn't lose its style. It became mm. a Tim Burton movie. I think the first one is a good blend of mm. Tim Burton and Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't argue that the first, I mean, the second movie, whether you love it or not, right. is about as Tim Burton as you get. I think like, the Penguin side, you can, ex- you certainly, sure. Sh- sure. I think with the Catwoman, though, I think it's much more mature than I, I like the Cat- I do like the Catwoman yeah. aspect of it. There's things yeah. I like about it. Yeah. I don't think it's terrible. Yeah. Um, it's no, uh, it's no Batman or Rama. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but what is? Right. No <laughs> shit. But, but no, the whole, but either way, it, yeah. it, pop culture, mm-hmm. it, 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 you can't argue what it did for it. Yeah. But then we did a rewatch for it on this show for myself and Winston. Yeah, I remember you guys did that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I wound up really getting like a nostalgia kick for it and really enjoy watching it, the first one, yeah. the 89. And so I understand why people have this love for it, but if you try to like compare it to like other Batman movies, I, I understand what he's saying. This guy, it's, it, has, it does have a, a Adam West feel to it at times. Well, those Adam West movies are to us when we saw 1989's Batman as now 1989's Batman is to people nowadays who watch the well, Batman from yeah, that week. I, so I get it. I think that's the comparison. Yeah, right. the Tim Burton stuff can be quite campy and uh, you can go back and rewatch it and you're like, oh my God. Like, I'm him him mixing the uh, freaking thing with yeah. the Penguin. You're yeah, like, the Prince soundtrack and everything too. It's like, yeah. 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 It, but, but we'll talk a little bit more about, mm. um, about James Gunn and his comments and how, because I think John brings up a great point of that when you're in that position you get, you, and you haven't had a movie come out yet. Yeah. People, and that, that fan base, I mean, the, the next person, whoever it is, whenever Kathleen Kennedy decides to not do Star Wars, even if it's 100 years from now, but like uh, that person that comes in is not going to have this like, oh, thank God, Kathleen Kennedy's gone. And whoever it's going to be, they're going to get some crap too. So we'll get into that point. But before we do, I want to tell you guys about um, both AG1 and Green Chef, two wonderful sponsors that we have on the show. And I'm going to tell you about them right now. You guys are very familiar with AG1. And I'm glad that I am. I love AG1. They've changed my life, man. They really have. Our next partner is AG1. It's the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it every day. I wake up in the morning. I shake up uh, a scoop in a bottle of water. And actually, I've been using this cup I got from the zoo. Don't ask me why. But I, I, that's what I've been doing normally. And I put it in this cup, and I shake it around. And it is, and I, I love my coffee. I'm not going to tell you that I don't love coffee, but I only take one cup of coffee now. I only need one cup because AG1 is, I, my sleep quality is better. My, uh, it, it just everything about them. I feel like my immune system is better now. It's like there's so much better. I just feel overall, I feel so much more healthy. My, I've been in a better mood since I've been taking AG1. I really have. And I love it. It's so good because I can't do the, it's hard for me to do this supplemental routine. It comes with a whole bunch of different products, and it, it's just, I don't know. It's its just easier for me to do it all with one shot. And since I've been drinking AG1, I've known just a, a lot of mental clarity. Uh, my, my digestion is easier. I'm focusing a lot better. So for me, I don't understand why people would want to take a bunch of different things where you can just take one scoop, put it in powder, shake it up once a day, boom. Because AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. It's the best. I am so excited and I'm so glad they're with us. They've been with us for so long. And you know, I had someone over the weekend ask me, hey, I want to support the show. I want to I want to try AG1. You think I, I'll enjoy it? I said, yes, you will enjoy it for sure. And one of the things I really like about it too is that it tastes good. You wouldn't, it's green. It tastes good. I'm telling you. And it smells good too. My wife the other day, she's like, what smells like berries? I was like, AG1, man. So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. You have to go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. Drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. You'll thank me later. You guys know Green Chef. I've been talking about Green Chef forever. I love them. I've been... So excited to continue to work with them because I've been eating really good, as I mentioned before, not only with uh, with other vitamins and stuff I'm taking, but I'm eating really well. And the reason why I'm eating so well is because Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating clean with dinners that work for you, and it's not the other way around. You can eat clean the easy way with recipes that help manage your weight and support your wellness goals without skimping on flavor. When I was 
I talk about it all the time. I do my own. I, I make like quesadillas now, and I can throw stuff on the grill. They have really good meat, good burgers, and if you and they have everything that you can actually. If you don't like burgers, you want to eat vegan more. They can do that too. You can enjoy effortless plant based dining with Vegan Kickoff, which is a brand new limited time options, including delicious vegan breakfast, lunches, uh, dinners, and sides. They have everything. They deliver everything you need to eat clean the easy way for the rest of the summer. You can feel your best with nutritionists approved recipes packed with clean ingredients that support your healthy lifestyle and they taste great too. So if you want to check it out, please go and do it because they're, they're really amazing. You get ahead of the busy season with their convenient step-by-step -step recipes. They have dinners that are ready in like 25 minutes or less. I'm telling you, it was so easy for me and I'm an imbecile when it comes to cooking and it was so great. I mean, I love them. You go to greenchef.com slash 60 thing greenchef.com slash 60 thing and use that code 60 thing you'll get 60 percent off plus free shipping it is worth the shot go and give it a whirl as the world girls would say it is so good i love it and you'll love it too so make sure you check it out that is Green Chef, everybody. All right, once again, thank you to our friends over at AG1 and Green Chef. I've been telling you guys about them for so long. AG1's been with us for a bit now, and Green Chef, delicious. Have you tried Green Chef, too? I have not. That's the first I've heard of it. it i, I got to get on this. so good, and okay. it is like when, when my family was out of town um, when they went to uh, uh, um, Idaho, I was just making myself I was I became like a food network show. And I was in the, it was it was awesome. So good. But you help out the show if you're able to do it because we don't do super chats, we don't do stream labs on on the show. So the way to help us out if you have the means to, find a sponsor that you like. It's in the description. I always pin the links as the first comment below. Um, okay, let's get into some of the this stuff that we were talking about with James Gunn because I think you make a great point. It's not you got to know that he's another guy you talk about. Yeah. You think you're you think you're bad on Twitter. <laughs> This guy, I'm, I'm on. Not that bad on Twitter. You're not great. He is. Um, I'm, my my stance, my stance with um, with James Gunn is very similar to yours. Yeah, I think he does too much on Twitter. Yes, I think there's oh. times where it's very it's 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 nice to have the guy out there. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe James Gunn will respond to me, and oh, he gave mm -hmm. some he gave some information out there, and now it's there's a part of that that is pretty awesome, pretty yeah, sure. endearing. But there's other times it's like, dude, just step back. Don't start fighting with people because you're giving other people, you know, ammo. Yeah. Just stay, stay. what are you doing? He's he's on both that and threads, by the way. He's oh, doing he? both, going back and forth with people on both platforms yeah. and not the same commentary thread. So clearly he's on both right. going back and forth. If that's him, which I imagine it, I is. Think it, it sounds is. like it I is. I think it's definitely him. So to me, I think James Gunn is like George R. R. Martin. Remember, people were like, ah. why the hell are you doing all these other things? Finish the books. Right. And so I feel this way about James Gunn. It's like, I don't mind occasionally popping on there. It's fun, as you said. Right. But like the constant amount that he is having to contradict stuff and go after stuff and try to correct the record. Let him talk. I, I like, yeah, let them all talk because yeah. they're all going to show up for your movie. Right. So what do you care when they're speculating about all this nonsense? You're going to be the one that's going to set the record straight. You'll be the one that announces the casting. You'll be the one that tells when this film is yeah. coming out. And at the end, you'll be the one responsible for people's reactions to it. So why are you engaging in this shit? It's I think there's some people, though, man, there are some people that just can't help themselves. And, yeah. uh, and it, it's like social media is much of an addiction as anything else. That's, it, I agree with that. 100%. It really is. And like I said, as much as I brush your chops, it's like there is yeah. a time like I look and I go and I see your tweet. I'm like, oh, oh don't do it. I'm like, all right, all right. And I because like it's. There's tons of people in that whole Schmodown universe, and as you mentioned, like Kalinowski mm. and stuff. I don't between like the mental health of it all. I don't understand why people do it. I just don't understand. It's like, a great point. It's so easy for me now to I, I mute people left and right. Oh, ditto. Yeah, because I, because if someone comes, will will say something instead of going after them and doing this thing where if they say something, and then you get into this whole thread and yeah. going back and forth, and then you when you put that thing down they're either smiling or whatever too and you're now your day is like this as yeah. opposed to just mute and it's like there's one thing i think that it is very very helpful to post stuff up there yeah up every day when for this show this show will get posted up there this show will get posted on all social media platforms and i think that it's that's a major benefit from it and it allows yeah. people to get the word out especially because youtube's notifications suck yeah um so that i get it but it's like when you're the head of a company and you're doing this and you're trying to like as you said you're mm -hmm. trying to develop stuff but what he walked into and i think this kind of is the reason i wanted to have this conversation yeah. today so this guy's had such a crazy journey mm -hmm. i mean he really has you go from hey he, he was they think he, they wanted him to do it was between him and peyton reed who's yeah. gonna do guardians yeah. because i remember when we went for 
the Ant-Man set visit, Kevin Feige told us that, because it was right around they were working on, on the, we, we were there for Ant-Man. He was talking about Ant-Man. He was talking about the stuff, and he said that um, Peyton Reed was very close to getting Guardians. Wow. And, um, but they, they went with James Gunn, and James Gunn gets, and James Gunn probably going into that going, you could tell this guy's a comic book movie fan. He added his own sense of humor yeah. to it. It is what scares me about Superman, by the way. But um, I'm excited about it. But it scares me, the, the humor, the, the certain sense of humor. He's got a very distinct, like, I think it works brilliantly for the Suicide Squad, mm -hmm. brilliantly for Peacemaker, scares the shit out of me for Superman. Yeah, I agree. Um, but anyway, he goes through this journey. He makes this, this, this unknown property. I remember Makuga during the Schmoes days going, this thing's going to bomb. And it becomes this huge thing. The second one... I love it, but it was, it, it's gotten better over age. And I, I think the third one's the best one out of I the like three of them. One, yeah. But in between that, you speak about tweets that get pulled yeah. back up. He was one of the people during that time that people went after him. And he was one of the, he was a kind of the poster boy of going through Twitter and finding old tweets and then yeah. going, hey. And it has been for, well, it wasn't for people like Batista. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going to Disney and saying, I'm not coming back to Guardians unless you get him. Yeah. So I don't know what you're going to do. They all signed a letter, but yeah. Batista was uh, spearheading that effort yeah. 100%. Yeah. No, I know. He got caught in this quagmire of where the right wing uh, pushed back on him because he had been so overtly left wing. Right. The right wing, some right wing, I can't remember the guy who was who runs the show. I don't know if he's still doing the show, but he's the one that found Gunn's tweets and okay. then put them out there. Okay. And it's finding in those tweets, putting them out there, and that's what ended up having Disney kind of like take him off the project. But incredible groundswell of support for him and it swung all the way back around to where he got back on the project because i think people realize like it's funny he got caught in the trap and then he also got caught in a positive way in the backlash that people were starting to have about quote unquote all this cancel culture right. which you know it's a term you can agree with or not agree with but certainly it's what it's called and that kind of helped him out in the end for god's sake it did and i think that it would also not only helped him out it it kind of it's like when you're 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 in this relationship, and then you you know what I'm breaking up with you, and you were cheating on me, but I, but I wasn't. You're, I'm breaking up with you. You're out. Get out of here. And then you go to your new girlfriend, yeah, or new boyfriend, right? And you're like, okay, cool. I'm gonna I'll hang out with you for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll they'll you know what I'm I'm kidding. Right. I, I I I want I want you back now. All right, I'll come back. For a little bit. For a little bit. And now I'm going to go run their company. <laughs> I'm going to run the girlfriend boyfriend's company. Now. And it's, that's what happened, though, because he, yeah. he, went, he, he got inside the system. And once he got yeah. in the system of the Suicide Squad, because the Suicide Squad didn't do well. No. It was no. awesome. It was my favorite movie, uh, DC movie, my favorite comic movie of that year. Right. Did you yeah. like that movie? The Suicide Squad? The, yeah, Suicide, the yes. Suicide Squad. Yes, I, I did like loved it. Loved it. Yeah, I thought it was really fun. The, I mean, and Idris Elba is one of these guys that hasn't quite become that big thing. Like, everybody right. knows him, right. but he hasn't been that big success. Right. So showcasing him here was so good for him. So and then Cena, it was so great. With, and that leading to Peacemaker, which I think is the best James Gunn, best unfiltered, honest James Gunn project ever. Like, I agree. That is James Gunn top to bottom when he gets it 100% yeah. right. Made me a fan of Cena because I always, yes. thought, I always thought Cena was, I thought Cena was terrible in, in uh, Bumblebee. Like, <laughs> <laughs> terrible, and it's not necessarily his he fault because I think movie, he, he was in the wrong movie. Yep. He was directed like someone yeah. should have said, "We're not doing Michael Bay stuff for this one. Right. We're doing something different here. So can you switch that performance up?" And he's been kind of cheesy, and he took kind of that cheesiness and yep. stuff that he they had done in wrestling and, and a lot of his performances. And I'm like, he's doing a full thing. And then it was the Suicide Squad. Yep. I went, hey, he's good in this role. Yeah. So maybe I am interested to see him, and he is. Fantastic in Peacemaker, like the, fantastic. Either the second or third episode when he breaks down on the bed, yes, talking about like his a, dad, right? playing with himself and then talking about his dad. That I was like, there are actors currently working who've been doing it for 20, 30 can't years who can't do what I he agree. did on that bed. I agree. He, yeah, he he won me over. Yeah, and it's but you also understand as we were talking about the Batista thing, you get why mm. people fight for Gun because yeah. Gun brings things out of people. Yeah. in a way like he's. He's able to, with performances and writing, he's not just a, hey, make my joke work. Right. He re he's got very close relationships with these people that he works with. So I think that's one of the main reasons that people are excited for him. It's why I'm mm. excited about uh, the Corrin Sweat and, and Brosnahan of Superman. But yeah. like, what I was going to say, though, is and this kind of, again, leads into this whole thing with this DC and Marvel thing and where mm. it is right now. The golden age was from, from around Batman Begins... I mean, you could, someone could be traced back to, to X-Men, but I think that mm. when it really started with the MCU and everything, too. Batman Begins, though, for DC, yeah. 
starts this trilogy of films of Batman Begins, Dark Knight, mm -hmm. Dark Knight Rises, and they're just like these beloved things. And when the Dark Knight comes out, it's the same year that Iron Man comes out. Yeah, 2008, right? yeah. And that's what kind of jump starts um, the MCU. Mm -hmm. So until around like 2019, after Endgame, yeah. like it's just like I mean that's a stretch of I mean DC you had their problems yeah. and they had a couple films that popped but they had some money some movies that made big money yeah. I mean I know you don't you're not an Aquaman fan but I think made a billion dollars which is crazy yeah. and it was just in this golden age since then because I think a lot has to do with the studios mm -hmm. of saying okay you know what yeah let's just put out every show you can do make it make, make three Marvel shows there yeah, put yeah. four movies out there. DC's like uh, we have to do this, this, and this. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we just gotta we gotta catch the we gotta catch the trend, catch the trend, and and they're both just kind of right now. Yeah, because I I also think I think with Marvel it was more a matter of you saw them trying to go in a different direction where they were hiring younger writers who didn't have the same experience as the older writers had had who were made the golden age of what we enjoyed about the MCU. You saw them taking chances with new directors and yeah. new approaches and what have you, and in the end. It didn't really work out, don't and even broke. you could argue don't, if it ain't broke. Yeah, and you can even stretch it out to Star Wars. How many of those Star Wars series really nailed it in the way people were hoping they would nail it? Right. That's all under the Disney umbrella. So they were all. I think they were all just trying to take certain chances at a certain time. Thought they could ride it out and put it together, but now clearly there's damage on both of those brands. And DC, is DC has been destroyed over the last few months. So it's like. We'll see what Superman Legacy does. And certainly the bounce back of Blue Beetle on National Cinema Day was great to see. Yeah. As we're seeing, you know, a few days away from it as this is coming out. But, like, it was great to see that. We'll see what that leads to. And Superman Legacy has got to show us because nobody gives I don't think anybody gives a shit about Aquaman 2. Just get it's, it out. It's tough. Get yeah, it clean. Yeah, it's tough. That, and I'm glad you brought that up because there's a lot of things there with this is kind of one of the things I don't envy about. And we don't mention Saffron here at all. Nobody ever does, right? Which right, is not fair. Right, but like fair, Gunn and Saffron um, together, they did not pick up an easy gig to start no, with. No, no. Because you go into it and they go, okay, look, you guys do your movie, announce your slate, but help us promote all these other movies we have. <laughs> yeah. Because we're, even though it's not fair, you're going to be tainted with, if it does bad, right. it's going gonna, it's gonna to put a stink on the stuff that you do because... People who go to see movies in, uh, you know, Idaho, they don't have any idea what a DCEU is connected to a DCU connected to this. Right, they just right. see Batman. They see another Batman. They see they don't they don't pay attention to this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we got to market to them. But good luck. Yeah. And and that's why you get to, that's why you get comments like the Flash is one of the best comic book mm -hmm. movies of all time from James Gunn because he's trying to sell it. And right? Zaslav too. Yeah. And Zaslav, um, which again I watch. I'm watching this. Uh, it's, I'm watching for the third time with mm. my with my wife. Mm. I don't mind the movie. Oh, I, I like the movie. Yeah. This there, at the t every time I watch it though, there are a couple times the, with humor and a couple things I'm like, not the best, but it's still I enjoy it. I yeah. like the movie. I think it's a, I think it's a pretty. There are plot holes in the film, yeah. but it's an, it's still an enjoyable experience. I thought so. Yeah, I, I thought so. But yeah. but either way, so he's they got to do that. That they, the Black Adam thing, could have been fixed. If that movie cost $120 million like Blue Beetle did and they gave The Rock a ton of points and back end and other stuff instead of the big salaries and put Jama doing a freaking $260 million movie, that was the stupidest decision. Right. I love The Rock, but that cost way too much money because that movie makes the same exact money that it makes and yeah. it's scaled down. People are talking about how brilliant The Rock is Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. Um, and then Shazam 2... As I mentioned, the worst part about that movie is Zach Levi playing yeah. a 12-year-old when he should yeah. be playing an 18-year-old, which I thought Ezra Miller did a much better job mm -hmm. of playing an 18-year-old yeah. um, than Zach Levi did. But I, I didn't mind that movie either, but it ate it, right? Right. And then what was the third one? Was, a third, was it the third one or was, that, was, it Blue, was Blue Beetle the third one? Blue Beetle was the third one. Blue Beetle yeah. was the third one? Yeah, okay. Shazam 2, Flash, and then... Well, no, so didn't... Oh, yeah, The Flash, right. right so right, the Flash, right. so Blue Beetle was the fourth one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, The Flash, even though we both think it's a fine movie... Yeah. Was the big one of the biggest bombs of the of the summer of DC's entire Run. slate, right. which is kind of crazy to think about with with how they promoted that movie, right? But I think with the Aquaman two thing is is it's a really difficult situation because everyone's like, "But it made a billion dollars!" But it made a billion dollars. They should totally release it. It made a billion dollars years ago during and the so, Golden Age. During the Golden Age, yeah. and so now you're bringing out Aquaman two after the debacle of these last few DC gotta films. It, though. Yeah, you've got to. I know, yeah. I know. But anyone thinking this is going to cross a billion dollars is out of their effing minds. It is going to tank. It is not going to do well. 
the, nobody wants to see, a lot of people don't want to see Amber Heard with that after that whole situation. It, it's got it's got some it's got some hurdles. It does, yeah. Uh, and a lot of hurdles. people are, uh, that I've spoken to have seen it have it's, said it's, it's got four, not good. So there's always reshoots. Yes. Pe people when they go, oh, oh reshoots, there's always reshoots. It's always One, reshoots. maybe it's two. Big films, yeah. Four, dude. <laughs> Four reshoots mm. and James Gunn putting the last round of them. That's not a good sign. Yeah. That's a $260 million movie. Um, I don't know why he's touching it. I would have refused to touch anything that I didn't create. I'd I know. Been like, no, David. Let's just, no. just, just, let, it, just yeah. let it play. Let them play. Stop let, spending money on exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, I, stop I, I don't disagree. You're maybe, not going to make any money Maybe back. they think they, they can save it because Momoa's got... Momoa was the best part about Fast X. Yes, 100%. And, and so he, he stole that move. He does have something about him that you're just yeah. like, I think he is very similar to what you're talking about with, with Idris. I don't think that Momoa has had the opportunity yet, even though he had a billion dollar movie, mm -hmm. I agree. Um, he just, there's still that thing. He, I think he's a movie star. I, I thought it's just oh, yeah. Remember when he fought, what was the movie he fought with Stallone with the axe? Do you remember that movie? Oh my God. You remember that movie? Yes, I and saw the movie was in the theater. He, he was the villain in that, and he was, he was the movie good. was terrible, but he, mm -hmm. but he, he was, was great. Yeah, yeah. And he fought Stallone like, with an axe, and I was like, that guy's a star, because it was during the Game of Thrones days. It's but, a two word title, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that the movie, the only reason, um, I, I tend to lend more on the agreeing with you that I think it's in trouble. Yeah. But the only reason that I think it has a shot to make money, it doesn't really have much competition in December. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of things going on at that time to see. People like to go to the movies in December. Yeah. Um, and who knows if it's even going to come out because of the strike. But, it, but if it doesn't have Momoa to promote it, dead, dead in the water. They can't push this again. They can't. I mean, I mean they just pushed Dune. It, well, Dune is different because Dune was a success. Uh, but they need Momoa to promote this movie, dude. Like they, they even, they even, they, they did some like mathematical stat. Even a movie like mm. uh, Blue Beetle, yeah, with Shola, who is great. Or, he's great, but he's virtually so, unknown for yes, the most right, part, no, right? No, no, right? But he's got a very charismatic mm. personality that he would have helped the movie. Like, yeah. would it have pushed it into a profit? Probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, but it would have helped. And he's also at a younger generation. He probably would have gotten more people. Probably would, would have gotten um, a lot of people out there to see it. But Momoa, you need him out there. Now you don't put him or her anywhere near. <laughs> right. But you put Momoa out there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 the same thing like Shamala Shamala. I can't even say his Chalamet? name. Thank you. Yeah. Is going to do. Uh, he's not going to be able to promote Wonka. Right. You know. So it's like they're. It, there's, the, Warner Brothers is having it's getting kicked in the nuts. This is and another, it's their own fault. This is another dangerous thing about December. Yeah. You're saying it's not going to have competition. It is from its own studio because right. you've got Wonka and the Color Purple that, coming out within ten days. They're all coming out within ten days of each other. Wow! All well, three of those films. Color Purple is a very different audience, but 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 still, it's competition. Still, it's still competition way. against yeah. your own family, against your own studio. A yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always think I do always think when when Color Purple comes up, and I I like Elizabeth Banks, but I always think about that moment at, at whatever award show that was. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> when she came like, back to Spielberg? When she came back to Spielberg, she's so like, dumb. she's like, uh, and just curious that Steven Spielberg has never had a female led movie before. And then someone goes, The Color Purple. Yeah. And she goes, um, The Color Purple. Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> Don't say anything <laughs> unless yeah. you know Please. unless Please. you know that steven spielberg hasn't done it mm -hmm. don't say it <laughs> you know, i i would love to see what the hell happened oh, no, if that I ever know. she probably sent him gifts and i mean come on you don't come for spielberg no, it's no. such a mistake what are you doing yeah, yeah. um anyway so like <laughs> just every time I, someone brings up the color purple but yeah you're right though they have three movies coming out in the same month or same span or whatever 10 it is. days man so that's why I do think it's possible that they that they move it, yeah. that they move something. I guess. They move something. Yeah, a lot of rumors have been saying that we're going to move Wonka or Color Purple. I tend to agree with you on the Chalamet stuff. You need him to you promote. Him. People love yeah. Chalamet. Yeah. Um, Dan Feinberg tweeted something that's really funny. He said, release Dune and Wonka in May of next year. Make that your Barbenheimer by calling it Chalamet. And compete against yourself? Chalamet, though, like M A Y. No, but yeah, but, it's, but, but, you're, but you're going up against yeah, you're yourself. Going against yourself. It's, they're, they're, those are two different studios. <laughs> that, that, That's true. Thing. But yeah. Uh, yeah, man, so like you, you don't envy Gunn and, and Saffron for that because. And, and I will say this Momoa, yeah. Momoa was a star. Momoa was a star, and he stole Fast X. But Fast X still underperformed because it cost three four hundred million dollars. How much do you think these reshoots are costing? I know, I know. <laughs> it's gonna I be know. like four hundred for know. Aquaman too. These movies. This is my. This is. I. I have become the rent is too damn high for for <laughs> for these movies because it is man. Great reference. Man. It's too oh, expensive, yeah. and oh, that's yeah. why. So speaking of Blue Beetle, like if Blue mm. Beetle would have cost two fifty, 
The movie oh. is a massive disappointment. Yes. But it cost $120 million, mm -hmm. And because of word of mouth, like, I think you and I, for the most part, are on the same page with the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Sholo was absolutely incredible. I think star. he's a movie star. Yep. Um, I think that the family stuff was exactly what I was hoping for. It was very similar to Miss Marvel for me. Mm -hmm. The stuff that I thought was the least interesting was the superhero stuff. It was it was oh. generic. It was the same stuff I'd seen a million times yep. over. Um, and I thought Susan Sarandon and her henchmen were one note. Yeah. Um, but that's not why I went to see the movie. I right. went to see the movie because I was like, oh, let's see if, if A, he's a movie star. He is. Mm -hmm. B... Do I care about and that Bruno uh, Bruno uh, what's Bruno Marqu uh, yeah, Marquezine. Oh yeah, yeah. She's she, not only stunning, yeah, beautiful, really good actress yes. too. Uh, so there was a lot that came. I thought it was a charming movie. Mm -hmm. I thought it was charming. But um, if this comes out in two thousand eight, it's a it's a huge movie in two thousand. Yeah, yeah. It has that vibe to it. It's, yeah. But we've wanted better from our villains since two thousand eight. So it it gets caught in that trap. If it had a better villain. A better yeah. setup, it would have been a lot more fun. I think Greg Alba yeah. said it really well. He said that mm. it felt like a phase one Marvel yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, he's 100% right. But, and I think that one of the things about it is the problem. Like, well, what's wrong with that? Well, there's been phase two, phase three, phase four. Yeah, we've moved on we, as we, a lot. We've of. seen so many different uh, versions of this story. We've seen this story so many times, but I like the fact that he's, that hopefully Gunn, I think he will stay true to his word and mm. bring over Sholo. I hope so too. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it needs to be. They said it is, it is a, the character is DCU, but the movie isn't. Right. Why? What is it? It doesn't connect to the DCEU really at all, does yeah. it? No, no. There's not hardly anything. He mentions Superman. There's some Man of Steel references. Right. Uh, I think, Bat yeah, uh, George Lopez mentions Batman as character Uncle just Rudy. Just Batman, but, right. But just Batman, not right. the specific Batman. Right. Right, exactly. So you can play with it. I think that you could, if you wanted to, you could make that movie. People because want I, that family back. I hope, I hope that it is, um, as you say, like I thought that the $4 movies would definitely be able to help it, and I think and it boosted it yeah. up. Yeah. Um, and word of mouth, and that's another one that it doesn't have a lot of. There's not a lot of competition right now, mm -hmm. and there's. I mean, the only thing is like Gran Turismo. I will say this though: as much as I love, um, as much I don't know where you stand on Gran Turismo, but as much as I love Sholo, yeah. If someone said to me, "What?" Just a movie fan, not a comic book mm -hmm. movie mm -hmm. fan. Like a movie fan was like, "I want to go see a movie. What should I go see?" I'm sending them the Gran Turismo. It's a better film. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's it, it, it's just fantastic. I and loved it. It's even more like. You didn't expect this thing to be good at all. At all. At all. I forgot. I forgot Bloom Cam even did it. <laughs> yeah, right. By yeah. the time his yeah. name came yeah. up at the end, you're like, oh my god. But yeah, when you watch, I was really surprised at how well he directed the movie. And that is a film that is absolutely helped by the direction of that movie. It absolutely is. It is so well. And, yeah. and Harbor is great in the film, but Jaman Hansu shows you levels that you've never yes. seen from him before. Yeah. And I can't Teared remember up a couple times. Name. Yes, yeah. especially at the end. Yeah. And the kids, I can't remember the kid's name, but he is really good. He was. And he will be someone that I think a lot of people are going to be watching going forward for sure. Yeah, and so yeah. that's the only competition I really see Blue Beetle having right now. And that movie is getting word of mouth. Also, it's got a much better audience score because, speaking of generic, people think that it's a very kind of paint-by-numbers kind of biopic thing. Yeah. That that's what the critic um, has been. I, I didn't see that. I felt no. it. I felt it very differently because I, I guess maybe I wasn't expecting anything yeah um, because I really enjoyed that movie a lot and uh, and that's it I mean it, so Blue Beetle could have a, a, a chance the same way that Elemental did. I think that's what yeah. we're looking at here there's a possibility that Blue Beetle becomes an Elemental type yeah. of thing and carries us over into December, possibly, if word of mouth keeps building, because doesn't it doesn't make a profit though? If at the very at the very right. least it, it'll break even, yeah, because like Elemental didn't even make a profit. It's still it, underperforming for Pixar. Elemental, right? right. It, even though it's going to be five hundred million dollars probably by the end of its run, worldwide. right? And what did but what did it but, but through it was like a two hundred million dollar movie yeah, to make, exactly. and then plus marketing. So you probably with all the theaters that you got to pay and everything too. It's it's will maybe make twenty million dollars yeah. or something like that, um, but. That leads us into kind of the end of Aquaman is gets us in December, and I I do agree with you. Mm -hmm. They should put it out. Yeah, they have to. At the very least, go yeah. okay. Let's take it on the chin. We know Black Adam barely broke even. Yeah. Shazam ate it. Flash ate it. Blue Beetle might break even, but it's probably going to take a loss. What do we do? Just take the loss and move on to the next phase because the next because I would say the reason I say yeah. Go to the next, just put it out because if you put it out in 2023, 2024, you got nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nothing. And you don't have anything until 2025 when right. Superman Legacy. comes out and you give it you give it a chance to, to breathe. You push it again into March and April, and then it's still, 
like I said, the casual movie fan is going, oh, was that connected to the Momoa thing? And you're going to be like, well, actually, no, it's not because people, my, my, my uncle who goes to see these movies, he doesn't know what no, the hell right. any of this stuff is, like this bubble that we live in. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like, no. and people are tired of the, of the, of the superhero stuff. And that's kind yeah. of the, the basis of this kind of conversation. You can sense it. You can feel it. And the reason is, and I, 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 uh, the reason is because the quality has gone down. hundred percent. And I think rightfully so, the fans are not going to see these films because of that. Yeah. And that's telling the story, you know, um, uh, Totally respect Koi. Koi and I, uh, we don't always see eye to eye. Him telling people to go see Shazam 2 or else we're going to lose these movies, I think that's not the right approach. Now, it doesn't mean Koi's approach is wrong overall. It's his, it's his approach, it's his opinion. But for me, I think that's the wrong thing to say because if people keep going to mediocre films, guess how much effort the studio is going to make about these films? Right. Mediocre efforts. Right. You've got to vote with your pocketbook. And if you don't go see these films uh, or your wallet, whatever, if you don't go see these films, then you're telling the studio... Do better. I think and his I point. Think that's I agree with what you. What you have to do. I yeah. agree. I think his point. His point, though, is maybe in the because this is from being someone who's worked in that studio system. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you could see is the studio's kind of doing the old. Well, it looks like the fad is dead, and let's just kill it. Right. That's right. probably he, kind of where his he's fear is from. the overall. That's the, I think it's. I think it's right, the overall, right, right. and that's kind of where he's coming from with it. Yeah. But I, I, I think you're right. It's like that was the. The problem is once, and this is what I talked about recently, yeah. is that Feige, which we'll get into Marvel in a moment, mm. is that it's like Feige is stretched way too thin yes. because of the whole thing that, that what people always do a lot of times, and I'm sure you get it on your channel, I get it on my channel all the time when they're talking about Disney and they're like, well, I don't trust Disney to, to write a good Star Wars mo show and good movie. And this Disney has nothing to do with the writing of the show. <laughs> they have nothing to do with it. Yes. They give them the check to make it. Right. If there's certain things they think aren't going to be right for their standards, and things, they'll give notes. But the decisions that are made, they're like, I don't trust Disney Star Wars. It's Lucasfilm Star Wars stuff. Yes, Disney it is. owns it. Right. Disney owns it, and there's certain things. But Lucasfilm is the one that puts out the stuff and gets like anything. Like you want to Boba Fett, you want to blame Boba Fett. You don't blame Disney. You blame Lucasfilm. Yeah. You want to give props to Mandalorian season one and two. You give props to Lucasfilm, right? right. You give props to them. Disney cuts them the check, and they collect money from the revenue and stuff of movies and right. TV and right. merch and all that stuff. That's what they do. But when they, this whole thing of like. Well, it's it's Disney's fault because Disney was the one who 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 added this and told Feige, Feige to do this. Well, they were still part of it with Endgame. Yeah. So is, is that yeah. so? Is that Disney? Disney? Yay! No one says yay for Disney on that. It's funny how that works. It, right? It's right. right. It's always it's always the and then what I do think is Disney's fault is this. Mm. This is something you can blame Disney on, when there's all the success. And Marvel's making hand over fist during the golden age, yeah. and Endgame blows up. Like, oh, you know, we got the streaming service. Kevin, can you give us two or three shows a, 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 a year? Can you do that? He's like, that's a lot. We want three of them. And can you give us three or four movies a year? It's a lot. We want them all. That they can do, yeah. and they have done that. Right. And I think that's been a detriment to the Marvel brand. Yeah. Yeah. And before we get into it, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about Marine Layer and BetterHelp. Here we go. Support for today's episode comes from Marine Layer. You guys know I love t-shirts. I wear them all the time. They sent me the softest t-shirt ever. Like ever. Imagine like the softest thing that you ever touched. Kittens. Small puppies. Or freshly fallen snow. Now take that by a thousand. I'm telling you, these things are so soft. I couldn't believe it. People tell you that stuff all the time. But this is, this is fact. Whether you're going out on a date. You're at the office. You're keeping a casual. You're shooting videos. Marine Layer has the best shirts for every occasion. Marine Layer clothes are that perfect mix of laid-back style that also looks and feels premium. So I needed a new gear man, and they sent me this website, and I was on there forever going through stuff and picking out great stuff. They just have so much to choose from and so many different things. Like comfortable, comfortable, uh, whatever your style is. I love it. It's so soft. It doesn't matter how many times you wash it. Soft, soft, soft. It's incredible. I love them. And I wasn't, I'm wasn't. i always in the look for new gear, and I found it. Marine Layer, man. Now, for a limited time, get 15% off with the code BIGTHING15 for 15% off your entire order at marinelayer.com. Save your closet one shirt at a time. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. All right, so there are tons of times, especially for me, I've just kind of been up late, thinking too much so don't don't think about that now don't worry about that now just go to sleep go to sleep and you can't and you just have thoughts racing through your heads keeping you up at night do you ever do that you ever just right before you're about to sleep your brain just won't stop talking well it turns out the one great way to make them stop is to talk through them 
And that's what therapy does. It gives you a place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental peace. I've talked about it here. Roxy's talked about it here. Roxy has been with BetterHelp and using BetterHelp for months and months and months, and she's in such a great place. I have family members that have been with BetterHelp, such a better place now. It is so helpful and so convenient. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. What you do is you fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist, and then you switch therapists anytime, no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Big Thing today and get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Big Thing. BetterHelp.com slash Big Thing. And you work with BetterHelp as well, too, right? Yeah, yeah. they uh, sponsored the Cinephiles, which is one of the podcasts that I host. Uh, yeah. We did for a long time. They sponsored us, and we're working through them uh, hopefully very soon again on our new uh, uh, platform. But the great stuff. You know, Christian, well, you know what? You and, I, you and I have talked about it off mic and on mic. Uh, mental health is an important, important yeah. thing. It's something that saved my life in 2016, and I, I, I love that BetterHelp exists. Yeah. I love that they offer that, health, uh, that uh, mental health care for people that need it at prices that they can afford and convenient ways that they can have these things addressed with them. It's important, man. It is. And I, I think that we, as I mentioned in the, the read, and I mentioned like my Roxy Schreier, who's been mm. very vocal on, on the show, had, because of this show and because BetterHelp was sponsoring this, she was able to reach out. She's talking to somebody uh, the last like couple, like, four months, five months. She's been so happy with the people in my family wow. have been using it. It's been super helpful. So we're glad to have them. And Marine Lair. Let me tell you, I loved soft. I love soft shirts, and I got these pants, dude. Like I, I was worried because I saw these pants that not these, um, but there's like it. And I can't do the skinny jeans thing. I can't. Okay. I can't do it. I can't. I but it. but I can't do it. And yeah. but they for these relaxing pants. And God bless anybody who does it. But they give other options. Mm. And I'm like, okay. So I'm I'm really liking them as well too. So if you're able to and you haven't done it, as I said before, the link is in the description. That's how you help out the show. Um, people are always asking, hey, I, I listen to this show all the time. I listen to it every day now. Uh, how can I support the show? You can support the show and help yourself by finding one of our wonderful sponsors. The link's in the description, and I always pin the sponsors to the first comment. Um, all right, John, so we, we talked about... Hold on. Yeah. Stop for a second. Go ahead. I want to ask you something. Go ahead. Who came up with this idea of the light blue wall? I, I love the way that it has progressed in this studio. Because it's been a while since so I've been here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you haven't see seen the, the, I didn't see, the light blue wall was new, and I noticed, obviously, watching some of your right, content right. in the last yeah. few months. But the who came up with this design behind you? Was this all Christian Harlock? I'm not going to lie to you, John. This is all Brett Sheridan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I should say this. That we, son of a bitch is good for something. I should no, say this. We, we talked about it. So, like, yeah. um, beforehand, we when I went out on my own after Skybound, yeah. um, we, Brett and I came up with an idea of what we wanted to do. So we, were, we went through, like, Amazon together, and he's like, what do you think about this? I was thinking of this. And I was like, well, yeah. And, I, and so my wife actually, to be fair to her, because yeah. I know she watches, she's like, wait a minute. My wife actually came up with the Blue Bricks. So portion. smart. Yeah, she was the one she that came up with that. She deserves a lot of credit. And then, so Brett... Put them all up, did that, mm -hmm. and then um, we. What we did was because I didn't. I was like, "Look, I'm gonna have to build." Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And I thought it was. I thought this would take us around a year and a half, two years to even come close to what it is now. Yeah. But we put an Amazon list out there and said to the kind. said to the fans like, "Hey, if you want to help us out, please do." And we still have that Amazon list. I got something. Someone sent it to me like last week. Something on, on awesome. the list too, and it's like it's very supportive. It's awesome. And and then yeah, we we call these like the first rate Nate lights because we one oh, of yeah. our one of our viewers he got all the lights for us and it was right. like the monitors. It just it was it was very humbling yeah. to say the least. But thank you. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it looks and then yeah, Gentle Giant sent a bunch of stuff. That's it's awesome. Like that Bruce Lee thing, I yeah. love. Yeah. Um, so it's I, I use a green screen because I can't right. get this replicate this look at where in my house where I do my stuff. So I'm just envious of the fact that you can make it look through as inviting as war and as warm as you do. So. And then we have you know we have the Katie set, but we're going to probably oh, that's right. start yeah. using that for um, because we got other things we're doing with her. Are we moving on to that set next or no? We so <laughs> well, you want you want to you want to shoot in that set? Is that what, you, what did you say? Are we it. moving on to set? Oh yeah, we're going to move on to set too. Yeah, no, we're instead, of, instead of Marvel, we're just going to talk about the set for sure. But we, um, but no, that whole set is. Um, it, we did a, a thing that doesn't it bum me out? Like when you work on like a segment, you work on something or a new show, yeah, and it doesn't do what you want it to do, right? It's just since the Collider days. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so we did a thing that I thought was, and people that watched it loved it, but it was called yeah. um, film treatment, mm. right? And it was, and it was basically Brett on the couch. 
given a review, but me acting like the therapist. Oh, and yeah. Film and he would yeah. go and see a movie, and he would do, and he did like Fablemans, and he yeah. did something else. Like, oh, he talked about uh, whether or not Tony Gilroy was going to do follow the K2SO canon, right? <laughs> and I thought they were really, really funny and really yeah. good, but and they just didn't do what it was. So we, 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 but it just shows you we killed the set, and then Katie wound up using that corner for That's a bit. Perfect. Yeah, so yeah. Um, things happen for a reason. Yeah, for sure. But going back into Leading, mm. we'll close with James Gunn on this. What times you're out? Oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So James Gunn now is going to basically, if he gets lucky, Aquaman 2 makes money. Yeah, yeah. If he, it's, you know, it's not his, anything that, that, they, that these movies do. He can't be judged for I, I don't by hang anything on James Gunn. Yeah. Yeah, not but, a damn thing. Well, the audience, a lot of the audience will. I know, it's frustrating. Lot, but, but like Zaslav can't. Yeah. Um, and shouldn't. Hey, well, you came in. You're supposed to promote these movies. It's like, no, right. and I don't think he would do that. But Superman Legacy is everything. Yeah. If that movie bombs, it's over. Yeah. It's over. Uh, yeah, I saw one of the guys um, that I follow for box office, Luis Fernando. I think okay. his name is. He was saying, "Well, the first movie doesn't have to be doesn't have to do well box office. So it's, False. I mean, you're insane. False. You're absolutely insane. People are waiting with knives out. Yeah. The Snyder Bros are absolutely waiting to tear him to pieces, but." Some of the DC fandom is also a bit upset about everything. So if it comes out and it does not do well and it is not well received, it's that over. is, it's over. It's over yeah. because because it's it's a one thing if he was what's the what's the Commandos movie that it, that it's called? What's yeah, it, yeah, what's, Howling Commandos. No, whatever, or, oh no, what, uh, the one with the David Harbor's in it. Right, 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 right. But in that one, if that one comes out first and it doesn't, the animated do, one, right? Well, is that is Creature that Commandos? That's, Creature. That's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, animated. Yeah. All right, so that's the, animated. Bad, bad yeah. example. That's a serious. Um, so the, I don't know, Swamp Thing. Okay, let's say sure. Swamp. Let's yeah. say Swamp. I'm just thinking. Yeah. The, let's say Swamp Thing comes out first, and Swamp Thing comes out, and Mangle puts it out, and it eats it. Yeah, it's the first movie. Yeah, not good, but not detrimental. Right, because it's Superman. It's right. It's, it's Superman, Superman. Yeah. and Superman hasn't had a massive movie. Remember, I love Henry Cavill as, yes. as Superman, and I think he got Me screwed. Too. I Me really too. do think he got screwed, and I would. And I was excited to have him back. But let's not pretend that Man of Steel was a billion dollar blockbuster. No, I love that movie. Yep, it's me 700, too. And, for, and what the funny thing is, it's seven hundred million dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. And today, I mean, Guardians did what eight hundred? Yeah. Guardians three did eight hundred. It's a lot of money. But in the golden era, it was looked upon as like, well, oh, it didn't do that good. Right. It did well. It did right. really well, and it didn't even get a sequel. It, it they jumped into Batman v Superman. He got screwed from the start. Yep. But Superman hasn't had the Superman kind of um, the feel that we always knew. Like Snyder took him in this kind of darker tone, yeah. which I thought was a good choice at the time. But Me like too. now, the Christopher Reeve kind of hope Superman, we have not had that. Yeah, no. In right. a long time since Brandon Ralph, and it didn't work. Even that didn't work. Didn't yeah. work. So this is going to be the first time, and he's also going to be, if it does well, he's going to be the guy that leads your, your universe. Yeah. He's going to be your Iron Man. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, if it bombs, it's over. He put he, this is he's putting the tent pole in the ground. Yeah, to let you know that this is what everything's going to spring from. It's the tree, right. and if the tree is rotten at the core from the beginning, yeah. you're not going to have a lot of really good branches of films coming out from that tree. Because their contract went from what 2023, the beginning of 2023 until mm. 2027. Yeah. So, or is it 2022? 28, 20. I think it's 28. No, it's, it's a four-year contract. Oh, okay. It's a four-year contract. It was five. Okay. No, it was, it was four, because I initially thought it was three, and people corrected okay. me as it was four. But I, I just don't remember if it started, I think, did it start at the end of 2022, or did it start at the beginning of 2023? Probably 2023, I would imagine. Either way, let's say, hypothetically, the beginning of 2027. Sure, sure. All right, so 2027, um, and if Superman eats it, you're going to have one or two other movies that are going to come out in the interim, and then they don't get, they don't get re-upped. Now, yeah. Superman... Crushes, mm -hmm. and they still they they have a, a couple movies that you know continue on that legacy, but it does go into that fear of what's what's Gun gonna do with Superman, right? Is he gonna yeah? Is he gonna be able to not gun it? You know, because <laughs> like every other movie, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, fit his tone. Yeah, Superman to me doesn't. Well, that's why I think the authority is in there. Right, the so authority you, is going to be the James Gunn commenting mm -hmm. on the Golden Age Superman. Yeah, you're going to have the Golden Age Superman. Then you have authority making all these comments, scatological humor, all the shit that he does right. to balance it out. But is that going to work? I, I don't, don't know. know. I, I don't know. know. Well, let me ask you this yeah. before we move. Yeah. What about Wonder Man, Wonder Woman three? What are your thoughts? It on ain't that? happening. Right. They already said it. Ain't what, what did she say? 
I, I'm, I do was you agree with, with her or do you agree with you? Like, what happened? Here? I, I think it was I think it was the same thing that The Rock was doing. I think it was I think she was politicking in, yep. in the way to say, uh, you know, hey, this I, I do think people I, like me in this. Just letting you know, I will tell you, yeah. I do think that, that remember what happened when they had these first initial announcements before any of these movies came mm-hmm, out that mm-hmm. bombed. What did they say? Well, listen, we're not saying that the door's not open for any yeah, of these yeah. people. When in reality, it's like if these movies bomb, this door's closed. <laughs> yeah. But but I know you love them. the door's open. Same thing they told her, which probably they shouldn't have. Right. But they're like, they were well, they same thing as yeah. With Affleck, like, oh, we'll bring you back to direct a movie, right? Or Cavill, oh yeah, down the road, you're back. We'll, you'll be coming back. But, yeah. but this is this is spe- specifically yeah. Gunn and Saffron who were just like, look, we're 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 trying to figure it out because Patty Jenkins was like, well, I want to fit this, and yeah. they're like, we're not doing that, we're doing this instead, and she's like, I'm out, yeah. and like, okay, well. And they announced so it doesn't. It's just not fitting. We'll f- maybe we'll find something with Patty down the line. Yeah. With Gal, they probably let let's see what happens because they still had that. They still had her in two movies. They yeah. had her in Shazam and in uh, the Flash. Yeah. So they were playing nice with her, but they they shouldn't. They should have just said, "Let's see what happens, and then we'll revisit." Or they should have said, which I thought they should have said in the beginning, mm. if you're gonna say no to Cavill, yeah. then you reboot the whole damn thing. That's you, what they should have for done. confusion purposes. Right, right. And so I think she was out there, and she's like, "Look, I had a conversation with them, and they said we we're we we're going to develop it and this." And meanwhile, Gunn is like, "Oh no," yeah. you know, and Saffron like, "Oh no," and then he nipped in the bud and said, "Well, or Warner Brothers, somebody did," and said, "It's not uh, that ain't happening right, right. now." Gunn hasn't said a word, and, and we just talked about a few minutes ago about how he goes on social media a lot. If he hadn't said anything about it, that tells you yeah, it's not he, happening, right? Because yeah. he and I think that that's. Look, and I think that that for Gal Gadot, of course she wants another Wonder Woman. Right. I will say this. If they were going to do it, and Kalinowski and I talked about this, mm. is that I think that they should have just said, look, we're going to do one more with Gal to close out the trilogy, but it's an Elseworlds thing. Mm. It's, oh, yeah. it's the same thing like Batman. Like, yeah, they said it's just yeah. like the Batman. It's just like Joker. It's because we've had two movies, and we want to finish out a trilogy, and we want Gal to be able to take Diana home one more time. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an Elseworlds project. I think you could have gotten away with that. But... Having her like when it was a rumor that she was gonna actually come back as Wonder Woman, I was like, that's like in the DCU. I'm like, that's too weird, man. Yeah. That's too confusing. Like, so yeah, yeah I think she was politicking. Yeah. You know, and she's uh, she. I mean, you're a little more harsh on her than than I am. I think you, oh my God. you, you don't come like on. her. She's not a good actress. <laughs> I don't mind. Everybody her. fucking knows this. I don't mind her. She's she's good in the first Wonder Woman. Yeah, she's passable in the second Wonder Woman, but that's not really her fault. That second Wonder yeah. Woman was not a good movie. All respect, Kalinowski. Uh, but like he owns it, he owns it. Red Notice yeah. is terrible. And did you see her in the most recent one? No, my my. You said you shut it off, right? <laughs> yeah, my, thirty minutes in. My wife was watching, and she said she couldn't get through it. So. Yeah, but I don't. I don't. Is that her? Or the movies that she's choosing? Cut it out. If she wasn't pretty, <laughs> would you feel this way? Uh, cut, hey, it, stop that. Cut it out. Stop that. I mean, look, she's definitely she's she's, she's as, gorgeous. As Lou Santini says, she's not ugly, but um, <laughs> but she but she's. I, I do think she's better than people give you, give credit for. I do. Okay. I do. I, I, hope, it, I hope your if faith gets rewarded. If you're able day. to pull that, my faith will get rewarded when the aliens show up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if they, Don't get me started on this. I'm sure. Please. You're sure. You, my get, girlfriend's brother's daughter saw something in the files. It must be there. Don't get me started. That has nothing to do with it. See, you're one of those people who, yeah. like, I, I, I believe in aliens, by the way. We'll talk about some of them. Okay. Uh, Illegal ones. Different show. Yeah, different, show. different show. Yeah, different show. <laughs> um, but that does lead us. And again, yeah. look, we're, we're only, we're, we're not even done yet. It's going to be a multi, every time John's on, we do the, the, the multi. No, I love it. The I multi episodes. I think the last time that we did the, uh, the, the damn one, it was like two hours long and we yeah. did a, we did a big show. Um, that leads us to Marvel. Marvel ain't in that place that they were. Yeah. I think people ask me, like, what do you think? And I'm not talking about box office. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about what movies have you and shows have you enjoyed more in the last couple of years, DC or Marvel? Oof, I mean, you got to throw Peacemaker in there. So if I throw you, Peacemaker, Peacemaker, in there, the Suicide Squad, the, Suicide Squad. the yeah. Batman, yeah, Joker, yeah, or maybe Joker was 2018. So maybe we'll say 2019, okay. whatever. Okay. But but either way, um, and again, I like the Flash. Yeah, I didn't mind Shazam too. Blue Beetle, I liked. Yeah, Blue Beetle, I liked. And I and. I liked, I actually, I, I acknowledge it's not a good movie, but it's a late 90s. Th- I had fun watching Black Adam. I did. Oh I did. God. I did. I know. But, but, but that's it, because you worked with him. No, that has nothing to do with it. It was a, watch, for the watch, watching the movie 
And if you said to me, if you gave me all your points of why you didn't like the movie, mm -hmm. there's not one thing I'm going to say. Yeah, right. You're, you're not going to disagree with me. No, right, right, right. I just enjoyed just watching it. I just yeah. enjoyed watching it. So, I get it. yeah, because it was like when I, I just the stupid smile on my face. It's a, it's the score is fantastic, by the way. Yes, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, but um, but anyway, then then you go to Marvel. Um, I thought, I think we're on the same page. Doctor Strange two didn't love it. Her, I just hated that. You pure pure. Pure Tim, uh, excuse me, not Sam Raimi. Raimi. Pure Sam Raimi movie. Nineties, yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Panther two is fine. It's fine. They shoved in too much, yeah. but what they didn't shove in really worked. It really worked, yeah. and there was just and and look, they had a very hard thing to to fight yes. back from. So, but nonetheless, it was okay. Um, Thor: Love and Thunder was atrocious. You you like it? It's. I'm going to do the Christian Harlem. You can tell me all your points why you don't like it. Fine. But for whatever reason, Thor Love and Dunder worked for me. Okay. Yeah. It's atrocious, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, I, 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 that's, that becomes like Last Jedi for me. Like the, Every oh. time you watch it, it gets worse and worse and worse. Oh, and yeah. I, I haven't even been able to... I, watch, I tried to watch a little bit with my, with my daughter. Last Jedi? Or no, the other no, one? no. Uh, Love Thor, Thunder. Love and Thunder. I yeah. tried to watch it with my daughter, and I was like, I we can't do it. I, I can't. It's, it's so, made for it, your daughter too. That's it's crazy. so bad. Yeah. It's so bad. Um, so that one, and then what? And, but Guardian, Guardians three, I love. Yes, one of my favorite MCU movies. So touching that film. Love that movie. Um, and then oh. Ant Man, Quantum Mania, which, again, saw it in the theater. Love the science fiction element, but same thing. Like I just, it's the ending's bad. The yeah. end of that movie is bad. It's a chaotic mess. But I don't mind the movie, but it's a, the end of it is a chaotic mess. I think DC's had a better run in the show. Secret Invasion. Yeah, it did She-Hulk. Well. Yeah. Um, but then you get you get certain ones like WandaVision that did good. WandaVision's great. Loki is great. Loki's great. I, I liked like, Hawkeye. I thought that was a fun Christmas I like parts of it. film or I like, series. Right? Winter Soldier and Falcon I liked. You didn't like it? It, it just... Okay. I didn't. I didn't like it because it presented something that it didn't address fully. Mm -hmm. And I'm. All, we can't do Disney racism, okay? <laughs> if you're going to bring up systemic racism, Marvel, then Marvel no, wrote it. Right, but I'm saying Marvel wrote don't it. Don't bring it up. I'm saying don't address it because yeah. if you're not going to fully address it, don't waste my time trying to address it because this isn't. It, it, it was a green book approach to racism, and it was frustrating because there's something much more nuanced and deeper, especially when you see what you got from Andor, which is under the same umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had done the Andor approach to Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'd be singing its praises from the mountaintops. So, But so but, yeah. after you list all those movies and shows, now granted, Marvel had some more, so yeah, to yeah. either say, well, they had more, so of course they're better, or they had more, so more to, to fail, so yeah. of course. Who's having the better run since Endgame? Man, you could make a case. Uh, you made a really good case for DC. I hadn't put it all together in quite that way, yeah. but yeah, you might be right, which is ironic. I'm, not saying, I'm not talking box office. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You're talking quality and enjoyability, yeah. if I can use that term. Yeah. Yeah. You might be right. I'm going DC, man. But I also think people have a higher bar for Marvel now. Uh, so course. the frustration of is course. immediate. It's like being the yeah. sports team, right? It's like, it, right. It's like Yankees yeah, have a good lineup. They got a good lineup, but they're just too many injuries and, and they're, just, they're just not playing good. Right, so it's shitty manager, it's shitty GM. It's yeah, overcast. But but look, and I don't think that the GM inside of I think the GM problem is a Lucasfilm thing, but I don't think mm -hmm. it's a Marvel thing. Right, and I think that Kevin Feige stretched way too thin. But like they, the secret, I get, I I didn't. You, I know I saw your tweets. Mm -hmm. I watched two Secret Invasion. Didn't go back. Still haven't gone back. Yeah. Didn't watch didn't watch more. I mean, at the by the end of our reviews on the Geek Buddies, I was just wondering if we even needed to finish the reviews, you know, because it was it was like Willow. I was like, do we even need to finish these yeah. reviews? Because no one's watching, but right. you know, you're committed to them. Well, but I yeah, think you're not wrong. A lot you're, of people you're a better man than I am. Because I, I I the way that I do it now is that if if I enjoy watching the show mm -hmm. and I want to talk about it, then I'll do it all the way right, through. Right. But if I'm like, if I start talking about a show and the audience is like, hey, we just want to get your opinion on it, and then I'll keep doing it. But if I'm doing something and I'm going out like, and they, like I did those Secret Invasion, nobody gave a shit. Nobody yeah. cared about it at all. And I was like, I'm not doing it. I don't even care. I won't watch this thing. I don't want, I mean, and I've never felt that way about the MCU stuff because I always felt like I needed to know mm -hmm. what was going on. I feel, and I've said this many times over, and I'm curious if you feel the same way. Mm -hmm. I felt by the time we were into phase one and phase two of Marvel, even though, yes, they had standalone movies, but at least with the Tesseract and other things, you kind of knew where they were going with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What the hell is this thing? Yeah. What is it now? Yeah, they've got themselves in a problem because of the multiverse stuff. Yeah. And, and it, it, it seems like they have fumbled the ball quite a few times on the multiverse stuff so that people don't have a very clear idea. And I don't mean the nerds who have, like, fully mapped right, it out. Right. I mean... Regular people who are not into that bubble and are just trying to watch good movies, they're not making the connective tissues with this right. stuff because you've been clumsy and awkward 
and fumbled a number of opportunities to make them cohesive. But they and also, that's been an issue. And it's also one of the, as you said before. Like there's a guy, there's a big structure in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. They acknowledge no it once. They acknowledge it once, I think, in like She-Hulk yeah. and like in the newspaper ad or that something. That is yeah. massive. It's, it's, it, dude, that, and then they set up that thing at the end of Doctor Strange with Charlie Theron. She's, yes. like, she's like, they haven't called me. I don't know when I'm going back. Right. So they clearly just want to throw in a cameo, right? And then there's these other things, like the stuff that we've talked about in in nauseam in this, mm. in this show is that what drove me nuts is that they've done this thing now they used to do this thing where there is one storyline and they would bring in the the mm. directors to have their vision on it but they had the storyline involved and it was like yes we want you to put your touch on it but you gotta fill out what we're doing now yeah. it's like no go ahead sam Raimi, make a Raimi movie taika make a taika movie uh, uh, Chloe Zhao, which I like, I like Eternals. I know, I like Eternals, but it's a, but it is a, but it is a Chloe Zhao movie. It is a Chloe Zhao movie for 100%. sure. And it's like so that whole thing has now become um, and it, it, a kind of a loss because yeah. the Doctor Strange part of it, they didn't even read the scripts for WandaVision. That was insane. Insane. When I read that. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, what are you doing? But that's a Feige problem, right? Kevin Feige used to be like he would call in. I remember what, what I remember what video it was, but. He would bring in people to go, okay, this needs to match up here, and this needs to match up here, and these people need to know about this and this. That's a Feige thing. And whether he's stretched yeah. too thin or not, it's like, dude, make sure everybody, like, WandaVision makes no sense be yeah. because of, or, or Dr. Strange 2 makes no, no sense. Or these yeah. kids just show up. Who are these kids? Like, it's the same. You might as well just, it was WandaVision all over again. Right. She was learning the same lesson right. she had already learned in WandaVision, right. so it made no sense. And that's why reading the... If you are not watching the show or reading the scripts and you're making the movie, then there's no cohesiveness. Right. And I think where Feige got caught with Raimi, and Feige has not said this specifically, but I'm taking his comments about Raimi, he was hero-worshipping Raimi. Yeah. And that's tough to tell your hero to do certain things if your hero doesn't want to do those things and maybe Feige got caught a little bit there but this is way too important right. to be getting lost in that kind of shit and this, so this is an atrocious rumor that was going around uh -oh. is that he might that he might Sam Raimi might be uh directing Secret Wars yeah uh was Jeff that you guys mentioned that oh, to me that I don't right? know if we I don't know if we broke it but okay. Jeff mentioned that to me and I I, I couldn't think of a worse idea terrible idea yeah Real, but, and I think that goes back to the hero worship thing yes I think that, I think that unfortunately here, here's the thing what I will say is this: there are a lot of, and and the guy is a, a, a revered director, right? He's just not my. This is not my thing. Neither am I. Um, but there are Raimi heads. Oh, I yeah. I took my buddy Derek with me to the premiere, mm -hmm. and he's a Raimi head. And he was like, "Oh, do you love it?" I'm like, "Not really." Yeah. But he's a Raimi head. Yeah. Kevin Feige, he's a Raimi head. Yeah. So he probably loved the movie. And that scares me because yeah. there's been some great humor in these Marvel movies under his guidance. So to him to slide into that '90s Raimi Dutch angle mess of a humor that doesn't work for me now are there some scenes in the film that are incredible certainly the note stuff the musical note stuff it's it ingenious yeah it's a it's gimmick just, yeah it was ingenious you hadn't seen something like that before but the zombie stuff was wasted and then the whole thing with her and her wanting and, and the introduction of america was absolutely piss poor yeah and not necessary at all and Do you know so the, the best not besides no way home mm. the best Which multiverse stuff so far yeah. is what if yeah, What If was fantastic. Well, a, I, everyone thought What If was going to be combined into the multiverse of yeah. madness. Yeah, yeah. Which it was just kind of a chaotic green screens. Yeah, yeah. And it, the, although the movie did almost make a billion dollars, by the way. Multiverse, yeah, I know. It did. It made almost a lot. Hey, look, Transformers. I mean, you know, the new one? The new no, one I'm did. saying the, you know, all well, the Transformers films. Made four well, they've, they've, oh, yeah, that was a point. Again, not this topic, <laughs> but a point that I, I, I disagreed with you so much when you tweeted it. And it was, <laughs> it was this, oh, everyone says Michael Bay. He, he's he's horrible. Well, look, since he left, they've declined. Yeah, why do you think that is? Because each one, his movie, his last one was so bad with Stanley Tucci as Merlin. It was so bad that because of that, they didn't even put Bumblebee in the uh, Transformers in the Bumblebee title to try to get away yeah. from that. And that hurt it, by the way. He was still the executive producer of that film. Yeah, but I, but the Steven Spielberg was too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, how, Good point. how involved is he? Yes. But, but, but either way, um, yeah. I, I, but I get your I get your point. Um, yeah. it, either way, the, what they need to do with Marvel is they need to have kind of a storyline that we are following. Mm -hmm. It seems like we'll find out in October. It seems like Loki season two is the path there. Am I yeah, wrong? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And but again, though, Christian, we're 
caught in a weird space because of the Jonathan Major stuff. Right. Is he going to stay right. as uh, well, that trials as right Kang? beforehand? Right. right the trials are yeah. beforehand. So is he going to stay as Kang or not? So even if we're going to get a cohesive thing that maybe kind of resets everything and gets us going in one direction and we're all on board, we understand what's happening. Now we're going to have to deal with whether Kang is going to stick around or not. And if he doesn't, then we'll have to add another element to this, which yeah. is somehow he was reborn as someone else to look like someone else. And it's not the same as Don Cheadle walking in as Rhodes. This is a your main bad villain for the next big Avengers movies and shit. That one was dumb, too. Mm. They asked the director, so when was Rhodes' scroll? Was that? Oh, uh, yeah. Right. I think somewhere around Civil War. You think? You should know, yeah, homie. 100%. You should know. 100%. Like, what are you talking about, you think? You should know. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of stuff, like, everybody should, it just seems like it's not, not everybody's locked in the way that they used to be. What do you kinda, think? It's more than just being stretched thin, don't you think? Isn't the, this, is, there was too much of it. Right. But what do you think is going on here that he is dropping the ball quite so much? Remember, though, even though, even one or two TV shows, there were no TV shows in the height. Right. There were no TV right, shows, right. so they didn't have to like... And no Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. does not count. No, the, the, not not that link... In, or Daredevil. It, doesn't, it right. doesn't link in. So, like, I think that the way that I always thought it's going to... They, they do one show. They should do one show, maybe two. Maybe one in the beginning of the year, one in the end. But don't just do the whole Oprah, everybody gets a TV show thing. Right, right. Echo doesn't need a TV show. I, well, yeah, she doesn't need a TV show, and and they yeah. and, and apparently from what they were saying about the the actual um, show, it's they're not that it's not that good. That's why they're dropping it all on the same day, right? And then oh yeah, they are definitely releasing mm -hmm. it. And the other thing, like Ironheart, right? Yeah, I think that they jumped the gun with Ironheart because Ironheart, popular in the comic book storyline. She didn't pop the way they wanted her yeah. to in that movie. No one's talking about it. No one is talking about Ironheart, and they and they they put and I I didn't I didn't love I, I again I thought the movie was was good, didn't love that storyline because it felt like they were trying to set up a TV show. Right, and it's like let's actually put together stories that are going like what they are doing if they do it right in Star Wars, with Mandalorian. And mm -hmm. I was this is something I always wanted to see Mandalorian season one, season two, whatever you feel about three, Boba yeah. Fett. Skeleton Crew, um, Ahsoka, probably season one and two. They're all going to lead to Filoni's movie. Right. Do that. Let them all lead to something because I don't know. The secret. I, I, you saw Secret Invasion, so you can. Does it look yeah. like? It, does it look like it's leading to anything? Well, it's launching Armor Wars off of what happens with Cheadle in this film okay. in that series. Okay. That's what it's leading to. But the Scrawl stuff, they pretty much handled by the end of Secret Invasion, that and so that. it may pop up. With the Marvels, but I think that's them closing the book on it in the Marvels. So it, it seemed like a waste. Yeah, and that's well, that that's and that I guess goes then that's a way for us to transition into the Marvels. Um, mm -hmm. Because does that movie get pushed? Because you, because here's here's my reason why I think that if you don't figure out the strike mm -hmm. by November, yeah, October, then you have to push it back. And the reason why I think because it comes out in November, right. it's supposed to. The reason why is because I feel it's very similar to what we were talking about with Blue Beetle and Ms. Marvel. Mm -hmm. The superhero part of this movie is not what they should be trying, even though it's Marvel. Yeah. It's you it's the chemistry of these three actors. Yes. If it works and it plays, that's what's gonna sell this movie. You need the three of them to be on I all agree. over the circuit. Especially in Mavalani. Yes, she and she's People she's the, yeah. love her. I love her. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. Look, Taylor Paris is great. Certainly there are people who defend Brie Larson or don't like Brie Larson. It depends on what camp you're in. But Amon Vellani, universally beloved. Yes. And so there's an energy from her that's really great. And you need that young energy, especially for a studio. They don't care about us old fuddy-duddies. We're going to go. Right. It's the young people they want to get in there to hook into their universe to watch multiple movies for the next few decades. Uh, and I think this is where you're 100% right, which is why you were right earlier with the Blue Beetle conversation. Jolo Matadueña going on LAD Bible, going on all these different yeah. things would be so fun to see him play yeah. with the rest of the cast, with every, with Lopez. Like, there would have been a lot of fun content that would have motivated people to go see Blue Beetle even right. more. I think you're 100% right here. The ladies have to be front and center going on all these talk shows, going on all these YouTube channels to try to drum up interest in the movie. 100%. So we both don't think that it's going to wrap up. If if the strike, what do you mean? The strike. If the no. I don't think the strikes. I think the strikes go until twenty twenty four, if not longer, into the spring of twenty twenty four. So they got to push this movie. Mm. They got to push this. Movie. I guess so. Because I mean, it just this is a sh because Disney is not in the same place. Like DC, even though nobody wants to lose money, 
they at least can go, well, let's see what happens with Superman. Right. They're already playing the game here. Yeah. Like, if the Marvels doesn't do well in November, this is, they need this movie to do well. Because what about Loki season two? Do you push that? Um, Are they, con- is there? I don't know if it's connected or not, right? Yeah. And I think that that's, I don't think necessarily because this is kind of going off through your point with the Jonathan Majors thing, right? Mm-hmm. Jonathan Majors trial is like September. Yeah. And then Loki's October. Right. So I think that the benefit that the strike gives Marvel and DC at this I mean, excuse me, Marvel and Disney at this point is that they can go, okay, let's say that Jonathan Majors is found guilty mm-hmm. and found like that they found this evidence against him and that he can't be Kang. in Kang anymore. Now they have enough time because if they're going to push the Marvels, Great point. if they're going to push out of this other stuff, they have time to set up their new Kang. Now the flip side, if he's if they find all this evidence to where he's innocent and that there was stuff that was kind of that, that there were information out there that we didn't have, yeah. and it turns out no, he's able to do it, then they can still formulate a plan now with him right. to say no. That's I think that actually, and I think Marvel and Disney actually handled the Jonathan Majors thing yes, well. Yes, I agree. I think that people were like, because right away they were saying, when all the Ezra Miller stuff was going on, people were like, well, how come he's, they're, they're, they're just judging Jonathan Majors? They didn't say shit. Yeah. They didn't fire him. They didn't nope. do anything. Now, other places were like, we're not going to go ahead and renew, we're not going to go forward with this right. movie the right other now. other projects that we have. with Jonathan right. Majors. Right. Because the movies hadn't started filming yeah. yet. They didn't, it's like, they're doing the same thing. Yeah. They're basically saying, let's see what happens in September. If we were wrong, then we're going to go back on our knees, pleading, saying, I'm sorry, and we'll give him his gig back and all that stuff. So that's what's going to happen, right? But the, as a business, whether you agree with it or not, they're just like, we're going to step away from it at the moment. Marvel's locked in. Yeah. Marvel's already locked in in contracts and all that stuff, too, as far as, like, they put this guy, he was the, he was the lead, he's the lead yeah. guy. He's, yeah. the, he's the new Thanos. Yeah. So they're waiting to see, and they didn't make, I think they handled it right yeah. so far. Yeah. But, you know, this is what's going to happen in this trial, man. Like, this trial is going to really set it, and it gives the strike, gives them a little bit more time, I think. I think Marvel's, if it doesn't have any connection to Loki 2, will be pushed. Yeah. But if it does have, then we might see both of them getting pushed, which would suck, because we, I think we both want to see. But and it all depends, though, because if it doesn't have a connection to Loki Season 2, the other option is that Disney may know, and from a lot of people's reactions to the trailers, may know that they don't have a good movie, and they might, like, just... Put this thing out, the Aquaman get past two style. it. Yeah, yeah, get past it, yeah. and then look forward to uh, doing something else with this. Deadpool three seems to be the one that's going to do the most. Oh yeah, because oh, Deadpool yeah. three is rumored to have everybody in it, right? And is uh, you know, if you believe a lot of the rumors that Deadpool's going to essentially kill the Fox Marvel universe and then set up the new stuff, because this is where and then uh, this is a debate I'd love to have. Or not debate, it's conversation. You mm-hmm. might be on the same page with me. You might not be. My thought process is, because in the real multi, I've been so fascinated with, for a long time, multiverses, interdimensions, yeah, yeah. like all the parallel universes sure. like for a long time. But now it's like, since Marvel and, and DC started doing movies all the time too, it's just like, oh yeah, is that you like it because of uh, Endgame? Is it? No, I've been fascinated by the quantum physics and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's a big Oppenheimer fan, Chris. I, I was. I, I love, I love. Film. Did, you, did you like it? Yeah. Four love, times now. Love that movie. The movie's love so that good. movie. But... I think that the multiverse is a mess inside of the oh, yeah. Marvel, and I think it was a big mistake. I think that once they wrap this thing up, you can spend 10 years just doing X-Men films yeah, yeah. and Fantastic Four. That's all you need, because with the same way that they did Phase 1, 2, and 3, you have a Rogue movie, you have a Storm movie, you have a Cyclops movie, you have a Wolverine movie, and then you have the X-Men. That's yeah. the movie. Yeah. And then, then you have a Fantastic Four movie, you have a Doom movie. It's like, that's it. All these different side characters because they had success with Guardians yeah. and all this stuff too. That's not working. Yeah. Like, and Shang Chi, where's he been? Yeah. Yeah. Right. One movie. Yeah. He's not in. It, it, he's, no, been on, he's been on the Barbie. Set. That's what everyone said. Because I, like, <laughs> I, tw- I, qu- I, t- I tweeted that out and I said, "Where, where is he?" I was like, "He's he hasn't been, you know, like he's. In, I know that his. They don't even know when his second movie's coming out. But the other thing is, he hasn't even popped up in post credits. Right. It was this whole big thing with him and uh, Wong has Wong, shown yeah. up more than Shang Chi. Yes, yeah, 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 yes. So I don't know, man. It's like, uh, do you? Wh- where do you think they should go after uh, Secret Wars? I think they should do exactly what Iger is doing, which is slow the f down, yeah, t- reassess everything, take it slow, and figure out which of the ones you want to put a lot of time and attention, and get the right creatives behind it. And then let Feige relax for a little bit so that he can spend a lot of his attention 
on these separate projects and have some time in between them. I think Chapik is the one who wanted, because of streaming and COVID yeah, of and all course. of that, all of these series at once, come and the movies, and tie them up. And I think the aspirations were great, but clearly we see the results have not been good. So slowing things down, focusing on things. I hear your point. Certainly X-Men, Fantastic Four works, but you've still got to have other characters here who are going to be connected to the Marvel Universe. Right. And if you're going to come back with Tom Holland, who is possibly going to come back, as he said, right. for the trilogy, right. I think that... Or and fourth. I, for, yeah, and I, and I said this... Um, Years ago, I think even back on Collider Movie Talk, that I think eventually Tom Holland Spider Man is going to lead the Avengers because he did in the comics, right? Right. Yeah. And yeah. so, and and it, they probably were lining up T'Challa, uh, Chad McBoseman, before right. he unfortunately passed. Right. But it may. But uh, if you go Ms. Marvel, people are not going to like that. And I think Spider Man is the way to go to Tom Holland because everybody loves Tom. Yeah, Holland. and they were leading. It looked like they were leading towards you know Kate Bishop and and Ms. Marvel and all. That. But I, I think that right. I, Young I, Avengers certainly. But yeah. doesn't mean Spider Man can't still be because he's somewhat young Agreed. in charge. But it, it also but you can't get results off streaming shows. You gotta get results off movies. And right. right now there's no there's no results on it right now because it's just so chaotic. Yeah. Well, we talked about a lot, man. Yeah. We talked about a lot. So very curious what you guys think, man. Uh, as far as DC goes, that's the first question. Who who's had the better run in the last like five years? Is it I guess or after Endgame? After a game, who had the, because I guess with that question, people go, well, they did have No Way Home. So after No Way Home, <laughs> after No Way Home, so, so after No Way Home, who, who had the better run? Um, very curious to hear what you guys think about that one. And same thing, I guess the future. Who's going to lead the future? Is it going to be, um, is it going to be DC? Is it going to be Superman? Is it going to be James Gunn and Saffron? Or is, or is Feige going to turn it around, man? And as far as, is this phase six, seven, and eight going to be exactly what we thought? I'd like to thank John Roca for being with us today. John, you got your channel. Thank Tell you. them where to go. Yeah, you go to Outlaw Nation uh, there on the YouTube networks, youtube.com slash John Roca says. I've got my other podcast, the Hot Mic, uh, and the Geek Buddies that are out there for people to enjoy, and the Cinephiles, which is my big one, that we break down one classic or good movie every week or every couple of weeks um, uh, for you all to enjoy. See ya. <laughs> All right, so thanks for joining us here today. Again, thank John. Thank you, guys. And if you haven't already done it, guys, like I said, we hit 90. Now we need to hit 100. We're almost there. That's been the goal. And I think we can get there by October, November, but we need your help. So make sure you hit that button, hit subscribe, get us there. And for John Roca, I'm me, you're you. See you on the flip side. Bye. <laughs>